Yes. So what? Steve Rogers. I want my camera. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Ready to present the case. Help you with this car next How are you? You saw me swear or affirm the testimony about the the case now and probably the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, stuff you got? Sure. All right, I need you to speak in that microphone real loud, please. Give us your name, please. Larry Norton. Can you spell your last name, please? N O R T H. Sir, uh, where are you from? Northwest Tennessee. And uh, what elementary school did you attend? No, I would. What, uh, what about the middle school? Carter. And high school? Uh, I mean, uh, how old are you? 22. Do you know? 22. Back in uh, 2015, did you know Chris Bassett? Can you answer that loud? Did you say yes or no, please? Yes. Yes. How did you know Chris Bassett? Um, back in 2015, did you know Richard Williams? Yes. How did you know Richard Williams? Close did you know Kipling Colbert? Yes. How did you know Kipling Colbert? Close what about Malik George? Yes. How did you know Malik? Close uh, what about Daryl Sly? Close back in 2015, before uh, December 17, 2015. How would you describe y'all's relationship? How would you describe y'all's relationship back before 2000, back before December 17, 2015? I don't know. I'm not sure. Were you close or not close? So before 2015. How long had you been friends with Mr. Bassett? Say about like my fifth grade year. How long had you been friends with Mr. Williams? About my eighth grade year. Well, Mr. Colbert? About freshman year. Now, with Mr. Colbert, did you come to learn that y'all were related? Yes, ma'am. How did you come to learn that y'all were related? I just came in one day in the hallways at school. And so, how, how did you find out y'all were related? He, he, he told me who his people were. I talked to my mom. How long had you been friends with Malik George? About sophomore year, I think. Sophomore year? About my sophomore year. And how long had you been friends with uh, Daryl Slot? I was right the same time, sophomore year. Now, um, the group of y'all, had y'all made any vid music videos together? Yeah. Had y'all recorded any songs together? Yeah. Explain to us how the uh, recording them songs came about. Yeah. Where, where did y'all go to record songs? It was an apartment complex. What apartment complex? I forgot the name of the changed the name so many times. Okay. What part of town was then? It's not true. It's not true. And so who all would go to the recording studio in order to record these songs? Everyone you asked me about. Chris Bassett? That'll be her. Uh, Richard Williams? I think around that time was on the middle of Richard was on that Navy so. He was in the Navy? Yeah, he was on. Okay. Your Honor, could you ask him to speak up? Yeah, please. Speak up a little bit louder than that hard time here. Richard Williams, you said he may have been in the Navy at the time? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Kipling Colbert? You have to say yes or no. Yeah. Or you don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. She came along with Show them about the time later. I'm Malik George. Somewhat. And uh, Daryl Sly. A little bit. Now, the recording studios, how would y'all come up how would you how would y'all come up with the songs that y'all record? <coughs> would someone write them out or you just start singing? Yes, whatever you feel you go. And then after you would record songs, would y'all ever make any videos? And um, if I can, I just want to show you a, a still shot and ask if you recognize. 
And for the record, this is, let me get my numbers. 557. This is going to be Exhibit 557. Right. Yes, sir. Sir, so directing your attention to the wall. <coughs> Do you recognize uh, this screenshot? Yeah. What is this a screenshot of? One of the videos. Okay. Do you recognize the people in the video? Some of them. Okay. And, um, we would ask for permission to play this video. It'll be admitted to the five fifty seven of previous objections. You may publish. Person uh, right there? Yeah. Who was that? Kip. This is Kip. Yeah. Is that Kip Colbert? Yeah. Okay. Do you recall where y'all were when y'all recorded this song? No, no, no. I was at a park. I ran, I ran away from my house, though. You were at a park when you made the video? Yeah. Do you recall where you were when you recorded the song? Yeah. Where were you at when you recorded the song? A park by our house, though. So was the song recorded at the same time the video was recorded? No. So the song was recorded at a different time? Yeah. And then you came and made the video? Yeah. And so, who all sang in the in the in this song? I don't know, I can't get blamed if you want. Yes, sir. I just want to kill. All right, so so far it's Kip Culver, who's actually singing. Yeah. <laughs> Now who was that in the hat with the B? And again, where, that recording, that the part that he sang, where did he record that at? Studio. In the studio. Yeah. And then where was this video part portion taken? At a park.
Do you see him there? Who is this person here? What's the last name? William. And uh, do you recognize who this person is here? Okay. And is that was that be you right there? Yeah. Now, is it fair to say that you have zero desire to be here today? And the only reason you're here is because it's me. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to direct your attention back to December 17, 2015. Uh, do you recall that evening? Yes. All right, what were you doing that evening? What's going on? Oh, boy. Before 6 o'clock, what were you doing? And who was your sister? You got to speak up. Who's your sister? My real sister was somebody who was went to school with the age. And where did she live? Green Hills. Who all was chilling with you? Well, I don't remember. I went over there by myself. So, what happens while you're at her apartment? They, they came through whenever that situation happened at the BP Mom Grill. When nobody was saying nothing, everybody was quiet. They came through, they left. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you who came through? The only people I remember as they came through, probably like Malik. Do you recall, um, did you have a cell phone at the time? Yes. Do you recall sending a, uh, a did you communicate with uh, Kipling Colbert at the time? Yeah. 
And he recalls sending him a text message. Okay. If I can approach him. Right. Coach, I'll show you exhibit 53. Ask him to recognize exhibit 53. <coughs> What does he do at 5 through? Between you and who? Kevin. Um, Kevin Colbert? Yeah. And what is his nickname in your phone? Bro. Okay. Now, what message uh, did you send him at 7.47 p.m.? Oh, the boys out here telling him to come out. And what is that in reference to? Police. The police were where? I guess I think I'm going to Okay. And what does he respond? I'll be straight when I come. I'll get to eight. What? I'm sorry. What time? 58. So, it, well, I have to see text and say y'all straight at 7.57 yeah. p.m. And what does he respond back? I'm going to be straight. I'm going to come get to eight. You're going to have to speak? Clear. He said we straight. I'm going to come get to eight. What was that in reference to? Yes, straight on the And what time was that? 7.58. P.m.? And what do you say back at 7.58 p.m.? I don't want to come up. And what does he respond back at 7.59 p.m.? All right. Okay. I'm going to do that in as exhibit 5.53. Any objection? No, Exhibit 5.53. So, um, did you go out there? Yes, and I really don't remember that night. Okay. I was forget about it. Okay. Do you recall um, whether or not he came in? I don't think so. Uh, do you recall what happened when they got in the apartment? Everybody was quiet. Okay. Um, and when you say everybody, who do you recall being at the apartment before they left out? That's the rich. Big Okay. Was Kipling there? I was blurring that. And uh, you say when they left out. When did they leave out? What were they talking about while they were there? When I was saying money, I found that the top of bed. He told me like somebody came and shut up and beat me on the grill. Well, yeah, I'm going to object to what, who did he say he spoke to? He said Bassett. To? Okay, that's fine. So he's, Mr. Bassett said someone shot up BP's crib? Yeah, it's on the grill. He said his mom was straight though, whatever. What happened after that? Well, it was that they were leaving at 7 or something like that. That's like, whenever they said they were about to leave, everybody got to look. Everything was quiet and what came out of Who said they were about to leave? Whoever had came for the crib. Okay. Who would that be? Who else said I was going to remember. And uh, do you recall what time they said that they were going to leave? I don't even remember that day. Okay. So you're saying you don't recall what time they said they were going to leave? And uh, you said, did they leave? Yeah. And uh, when they left, what did they have with them? What you mean? Well, the text message was referencing uh, coming to get a gun. What did they have when they left the apartment? The text message was after they left their first time. So when they left, did they have any guns? Not that I know of. So after, I'm sorry, after 7.59, that's when they had guns? Or that's when yeah, I'd object to the suggestion. She can ask about what it is. <coughs> I'm trying to understand. If you're saying that he sent you a text at 7.59 that he was going to come to get a gun, I'm trying to understand when is it that he got the gun. Your Honor, what I'm objecting, she's not answering the question. She's making a dialogue and suggesting it. Did they get a gun? Did he come and get the gun? I don't remember. Do you recall giving a statement to the Knoxville Police Department? That night, yeah. Um, and in that statement, uh, did, was that statement recorded yeah. at the Knoxville Police Department? Yeah. And uh, were you able to communicate uh, with Investigator Leffler about the events that took place that night? 
Okay. Let me ask you some questions. Specifically, um, All right, so specifically, do you remember who was at Green Hills that night? Wallenberg. Yes, sir. As you sit here today, do you recall uh, the males that were at Green Hills apartment? As you have to say yes or no? No. Okay. Specifically, uh, do you remember whether or not Richard Williams was there? I don't know. Do you remember whether or not uh, Chris Bassett was there? That song, one and song. Yeah. Um, specifically, do you remember whether or not Kipling Colbert was there? Yeah. He, he was there. You yeah. okay? Specifically, do you remember whether or not Malik George was there? Do you remember uh, whether or not uh, they said that? Do you remember whether or not they, meaning Mr. Williams, Mr. Bassett, Mr. Perry, Mr. Colbert, said they were going to leave at 9 o'clock p.m.? I'm not sure that that time they said, I just know they said they were going to get up. I mean, they said they were going to leave at this certain time. I know that time came about they left. Do you recall telling the Knoxville Police Department the time? Yeah, I mean, I told them the time or what time I told them. Do you recall? Um, telling, do you recall them telling you? Anna, we're right back they? to the leading. Do you recall in the suggested statement? I object to her leading. If, if the answer is included in, in the question, it would be leading, but if it's just do you recall what the question was, that's okay. Do you recall them telling you where they were going to go? No. Do you recall telling the Knoxville Police Department where they told you they were going to go? Do you recall telling the Knoxville Police Department how many people left? Do you recall how many people left out of the apartment at that particular time? At, I'm sorry, at the designated time they said they were going to leave. Do you recall how many people left out of the apartment? I'm not sure. Do you recall telling the Knoxville Police Department how many people left out of the apartment? You can say yes or no. No. no? Okay. Now, do you recall? Um, did they return? Yeah. Do you recall uh, how many people returned? Not when as many people left on our Okay. How many people returned? About three or four. Okay. Who were the people that returned? I want to see if I can remember it. I know. My dad came back, kid came back. You recall telling the Knoxville Police Department the names of the people who came back? You recall telling the Knoxville Police Department that it was Mr. Bassett? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, can we actually have that stricken because she put the name in? No, I, I, to be clear, I mean, I'm laying the foundation so that. You're going to refresh that. Yes. Um, I think he's indicated that's what he said. And I'm just looking at uh, do you re um, do you recall uh, whether or not when they left they had any guns? Now, once they uh, came back, do you, whoever came back, do you recall what happened after whoever came back? Did anyone, anyone leave then? They came back, they wasn't married. One of them was the first time. Like I said, it was it happened a lot of us. I don't know if they were married. Just whatever you recall. No, they came back. She had four little sick and then they left back out. Who left back out? And um, when Bassett and Kip left, uh, what vehicle were they in? I guess Bassett's car. I'm looking out of my window and that. Where was Mr. Perry? 
you don't recall? You recall telling the police who left back out? No. You're not. Now, do you recall uh, seeing Mr. Bassett's car again? I'm sorry? Yeah. What type of car did Mr. Bassett have? A yeah, no. uh, what? Yeah, no. And when was it that you saw Mr. Bassett's car again? I seen my cousin dead. Okay, tell us about that. I heard nine shots, I went up to the car with him. And uh, who was in the vehicle? Big baby. And what, what part of the car was he in? Drove outside. What happened while you were outside? What do you mean what happened? You see your cousin dead. What do you do and what do you say? I'm sitting back here. I'm trying to wake his ass up. And what is other people doing? They trying to get him. Who would the other people be? I ran to the car. Richard was there. Richard Williams? Yeah. What was he doing? Trying to wake my cousin up. What happens next? <clears throat> I'll leave the and do you recall um, when the police got there, what did you then do? Oh, I'm sorry? I just remember they took me down at the station. Do you recall talking to the police there at the scene? Yeah. Uh, do you recall talking to the police about what had uh, just happened? Yeah. Do you recall uh, telling the police what it was concerning? Uh, you called on the police that you were going to be the one to tell them what happened? Yeah. Why did you say that? Because I wanted to know what happened with him. With who? On oh, Big Ben. You recall telling the police that this was 400? Mm -hmm. You recall telling the police that this was gang? You go down to the police department and you uh, talk to Investigator Leffler. Yes, you, you talk to this guy here? Oh, yeah. And of course that interview is recorded. Yes. Now, um, after that night, <coughs> uh, did you, uh, you have a Snapchat account? Yes. And uh, what do you call what your Snapchat name is? And uh, Mr. Colbert, did he have a Snapchat account? Yeah. You recall what his name was? No. You recall having a Snapchat conversation with him? Yeah, I recall. Uh, tell us about, uh, do you recall a Snapchat conversation with him about you trying to talk to him? Well, first I gotta ask you if you recall it. I gotta see it. Uh, looking at it, would it help to refresh your recollection? I'm not introducing both sheets, just I'm going to ask him about that line right there.
if I can approach and show you what's been marked. That's 556, Brian D. Homer. you recognize, look at this line right here, north from the east. You call that being your Snapchat name? And are you, are you Gunsley? Who did that be? And you just look over, don't say it out loud, but just looking at that, you recall, it might be easy to read. Call that conversation. Tell the jury about that conversation you had with the call. Mr. Norman. I know it's difficult, but you, you got to speak to the microphone so they can hear. So I was just trying to get on the talk to them real quick. Why is that? Hey, it was a whole bunch of miscommunication going on on my behalf. About what? Saying that I said this and that. Said this and that. About whatever case scenario that. About Lonsdale? Yeah. What? I know it's different. Yeah. So what what was what was going on? What what had your relation was your relationship with these guys the same on this particular day as it was before the shooting in Lonsdale? No. What was different about it? It was just distant. Between who? Who was distant? Everybody. Everybody was distant between with you? Yeah. Okay. And so that was, what was the cause of that? I don't know the police on. Who thought that? I don't know who started it, but they were just going around, like, all the social media shit, I mean, and stuff. And so because of that, what did you then try to do? I was trying to reach out, let them know what's going on. And so what did you say to Mr. Cole? Yeah, talk to them. You know what you heard about this and that, but that ain't, it ain't whatever you heard ain't what's going on. So can you read into the record what you said to Mr. Cole? I don't know my cousin, I don't know what you heard, but family is it's more so that I just want you to hear my side of me up in the head, you know. You know, I speak the phone with me. It's more than what you know, family to my family, I'm going to go up and respond to this. All right, so whenever you sent him that message, uh, were you ever able to talk to him about this? He got a date for that? Uh, yes, sir. Date like December 22nd or December 23rd. Yeah. Got it. Remember, they had came to uh, what I was saying for New Year's party. When you say they had came, who was that? Him and, him and Mr. Williams? Yeah. And uh, did you get a chance to talk to him at the New Year's party? Yeah. Okay. So after the New Year's party, uh, what was your relationship like between Mr. Colbert and Mr. Williams? Basically the same. Well, we talked for nothing. So we talked for nothing that night. So were y'all back to being talking or not talking? Same distance. Distance. And fair to say, you. Mr. Bassett, you were not talking to Mr. Bassett. I don't even remember. I don't, I don't okay. remember. All right, so you're not talking to uh, uh, distance, is how you describe it, between you, Mr. Williams, and Mr. Colbert. Um, now, in April 2016, did you still have a cell phone? And uh, were you able to send and receive text messages? Yes. Did you get uh, a text message from Mr. Williams? Yeah. Can you tell us about that? So we ain't chilled in a minute, this and that. I'm sorry, I... He said we ain't chilled in a minute. Who said that? Rich. What does it mean when he says that we ain't chilled in a minute? Huh? What, what does that mean? 
To explain to the jury what does chill mean. We ain't chilling a minute. What does it mean? Hang out. Okay. So that's what he tells you. So what do you do? Uh, if I come home, we're supposed to we're supposed to get together or whatever. Okay. Hang out. Thomas wanted me to know. So what happened? I don't know what you had. I got shot. Did you have text conversations back and forth between Mr. Williams? Yeah. this uh, incident back in December, had Mr. Williams stayed with you for a period of time? Yeah. yeah. Had he left anything at your apartment? Yeah. What had he left at your apartment? A little military bag. Now, that military bag that was at your apartment uh, in December 2015? Yeah. Uh -huh. You have to say yes or no? Yeah. Was it still there in April 2016? Yeah. I have to say yes or no, I apologize. Yes. Had he ever said anything to you about that military bag between December 2015 and April 2016? He probably said something like he was going to come get something. Now that real quick because it was just full of his clothes or something, but... When would he have said that? In between the time period, but it was only once or twice. Okay. If I can approach and show you Exhibit 5 and 4, and I ask you to recognize Exhibit 5 and 4, What is Exhibit 5 and 4? I mean, a rich section. Like move Exhibit 5 and, and for what day? April 1st. 2016? Yeah. Is that the same day you were shot? Yeah. Like move this in as Exhibit 5 and 4? Any objection? No, you're not. We'd like to pose it to the jury so he can ex explain what we're looking at. Sir, so about to leave out real quick. Who is who is saying that? Me. Who are you saying that to? Rich. And uh, what does he say back? He says what? So for sure, for sure, bang my line when you get back in the area. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. And that's at 3:11 p.m. Yeah. What do you say back? So I ain't even going out, bro. She was like, I don't get the car where you went. Alright, so where were you supposed to be going? And that's at 3.42 p.m.? Yeah. What does he say? Same spot, same blood down in my grave, and it's only broke. What does that mean? Probably his mama care a little bit. Same spot, fitting the bus down at my birds, then swing through. He's at his where? Where he was at when he first sent me up here. And where his bird? Who? What does bird mean? Mom. His mom? Yeah. That's at 3.43. Yeah. And what do you say back? I uh, like the bird. Oh, uh, yeah. When you get to the minute, it's kind of... I didn't get to what I needed in a minute because you got to pull up on your bird. So what does that mean? Your, your bird. What does that mean? Oh yeah, ain't kicked it in, ain't kicked it with y'all niggas. What does that mean? And what's a minute? What, what does that mean?
What does he say back at 344? And what do you say at 345? What does that mean? And at 416, what does he say? And what do you say at 428? All right, so where were you at at that particular time? Mark House. And where is that located at? South. Is that Town View? Yeah. Um, if you don't find it, it tells you where it's at. What, what are y'all talking about? We? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find a ride right now to get this little money. What, what does that mean? I'm trying to find a ride to pick up the money. But I'm here for now. And again, where were you at for now at 428? I'm going to let you know if I dip out. What does dip out mean? If I leave for my location, I'll let you know. And what does he say? I'm bad, but I just woke up. He's still in the area. And that's at 622? Yeah. And what does he say at 623? I'm going to call you when I'm outside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's still out there. And what do you then say? And what does he say? Is that weed? Yeah. Is it 624? What do you say? You gotta speak up, sir. Let me see what she got on the way. Say he had waiting on my ride. Alright, she had work in spring, got some small. What does he say? What's his number? Send the What do you say? What does he say at 631? Can't get pictures, just gotta send the number. What do you do? Send the number. 632? What does he say at 706? Say her phone off. What do you say at 707? Fuck around and got no longer on us. And what does he say at 738? Yeah, yeah. Alright, what does he say at 954? Alright, I was playing, bro. I'm finna just come up there and get my bed. And what do you say? Yeah, yeah. That's what he says at 955? Yeah. What do you say? So he's still not in no wheels. What does that mean? And that's at 955. What does he say at 956? So your understanding was how was he going to get to you? What do you say at 956? What does he say at 957? I got it wrong. Say what's up, though. What do you say at 958? What do you say at 1003? I don't need to ride now. You got a cigar, though. And what does he say at 1003? I can get one. What do you say at 1004? Shit, if you can't fuck with me. And what do you say at 1015? I'm gonna probably pull up on you with it in a minute. So what were you gonna meet him someplace? Yeah, with that duffel bag. Where were you gonna meet him? Wherever you want him to. And what does he say at 1018? What are you trying to meet? And you respond? You tell me. And what does he say? Kind of feel who you with. Is it 1020? Yeah. At 11.50, what do you say? Well, you hear like one other pop up here. What does that mean? I have to come up to the crib. Up to the crib, up to your apartment? Yeah. What does he say? She got a cold brush, and he can buy steps. 
Now what steps was he talking about? Or what steps did you understand that to mean? Like, being from our apartment down to the business. 1152, what do you say? I don't like that. If they lie, you're going to have to come, come to the courtyard or something. Okay. And what you say that they were locked? What was locked? Like if I would have walked out them doors when he was talking about, I would have been able to get back in. So where did you want him to meet you? In the courtyard. In the courtyard? Where? Yeah. I mean. In the middle of the apartment. So explain. You have to explain to the jury the layout of town, the apartments. It's like two buildings. Make a big circle. It's a big circle on the inside of it, in the middle of it. And what does he say at 11:56? I like to be me at the steps, but that's there for you. I'm already out here. And what do you say? I'm like going in the courtyard, bro. Why do you want him to meet you in the courtyard? I don't know. I just want to go through the steps. Can you describe where the steps are? Going down to the business. Okay. Do you know whether or not there were any cameras there at Townview? Oh, uh, I mean, it's like it's a couple in the parking lot back there. Okay. All right, so at 11.57, what do you then say? I'm trying to get it out. So I can make it double bed. 11.57, what does he say? I'm going where I gotta go. I need that bed. What does he say a minute later? I hit me the steps. All right, so what do you do? I get the bed, get my nephew and walk up the door. Why do you get your nephew? Um, um, when you get your nephew, <laughs> and we're not going to put it up on the wall. 555, you recognize the people in that photograph? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are the people in that photograph? Yeah, my nephew. And your nephew is about his size, uh, on April 1st, 2016? Yeah. Came to your waist? Yeah. Like in the sense, you did the 5 and 5? Yeah, okay. Is it a 5 and 5? Oh, that's a 2. I'm just going to pass this around to you. Like, yeah, you'll have it within the jury and so I'll plug it in the camera. Alright, so you got the duffel bag and your nephew. What happens? It's a big ass bag, but it got like two straps like a book bag. Put it on my back. Walk to the court here with them steps. Well, I'm like, before I even get to across the street. And the sound, the hoodie on. But like, he was at the point of the steps where I could just see like his upper body. So, like, close I kept walking to him, the more his body it got revealed to him. So, like, Close enough. I just sent him. Put a gun out of his hoodie and let go. What happened? He pulled the gun out of his hoodie and let go. He shot. Okay. Where did you get hit? I got hit one time on my arm. I got hit seven times on my legs. What about your nephew? Put him out the way. What happened after that? Get on my head on the ground. And tell him my nephew's straight. Mm -hmm. Please show up? Yeah. Did you have to go to the hospital? Yeah. Did you have any lasting injuries? Yeah, my hand fucked up. Did you receive any more texts from Mr. Williams after that incident? No. Did he ever 
Say, hey, where's my bags? Put this shit in the trash. That at this point in time, I may need a jury out of hearing. Okay. I think. All right, folks, let's go ahead and take a break. Uh, we're going to have a couple of people. We're going to have a couple of people. We're going to have a couple of people. Okay, um, sir, if we could, I want to go back to see if um, I can refresh your recollection with your prior reported statement to the police. Your Honor, respectfully, I think the question first has to be asked before we put a recorded statement up is do you think it can be? You don't get the opportunity to do it. I get it's, you know, perfunctory, but he has to at least have the opportunity to answer the question. You asked that earlier about the text messages. And so since we got the jury out hearing, I'm not going to make him do that in front of the jury. Um, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, my, my thing is, is once you play it, you've already suggested it. I mean, but I think the jury's not seeing it. He would get to read it anyway. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to let him refresh his memory if it does. If it doesn't, then it does refresh his memory. I'm going to let him leave show to me, which is, that's the way the rule works. All right, gentlemen. So I had asked you uh, the question about uh, the names of the people who uh, left out of the apartment or who arrived at the apartment, and you did not recall. I would like to play a portion to see if it helps you refresh your recollection. Uh, 
because you didn't remember where they went, right? So let's go down to right there. Um, right above are they in the game? So where did you start? Uh, how many guns did you see? listening to those clips, those, do those clips help to refresh your recollection as to um, what happened about the questions that I was asking you about who left out of the apartment? And so even after watching these, well let me ask you this, after watching that clip, does that help to refresh your recollection as to the time that they said that they were going to leave? I mean, yes, yeah, that's right there. Okay. Does that help to refresh your recollection as to the time they tell you they were going to leave? Okay. After watching that clip, does that help to refresh your recollection as to um, the location where they said they were going to go? Yeah, good. Okay. What location did they say they were going to go to? Did they specify where at West? No. 
after watching that clip, does that help to refresh your recollection as to where west they were going to go? No. And after watching that clip, does it help to refresh your recollection as to the as to whether or not you saw any guns? No. I mean, I said, I said, I said everyone here on our own. You don't remember that now. I don't remember everyone. I don't know. And um, just so we're clear, this uh, statement, it was video recorded uh, right after uh, your cousin being shot uh, yeah. at Green Hills. Yeah. Uh, your Honor, I'd like you going to allow cross-examination now, but the state we're going to ask to play those portions under 803-26. I think they uh, have, not, have had an opportunity to cross-examine about yes, the state. Uh, I don't know whose turn it is. Uh, uh, Mr. Rogers, actually. Uh, Mr. Rogers, the uh, state is requesting that this portion that we just played for Mr. North be admitted as substantive evidence under 80426, 806326. What's your position? Can I just ask him a few questions, Judge? Are you saying that you don't remember saying those things? Is that what you're saying? Okay, but you heard yourself say those things, right? And so your answer is that doesn't that doesn't refresh okay you just don't remember saying those things even though you've heard yourself say those things okay right. judge I don't have any so you originally said you didn't think Kip came in you said you didn't think Kip came in. Do you recall saying that earlier? Yeah. Okay. You recall saying it? I just said yes. Okay. Okay. So you don't think Kip was there? Oh, no. Oh. I'm sorry. What's your answer? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. I apologize. I assume we're just crossing the doors. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're just talking about the okay. specific statements. Uh, it's about who left together in the cars, who had guns. Okay. Who had the guns? Do you recall saying that? No. You don't remember who had guns? No. Okay. So you don't recall if Kip had a gun? I didn't like people being the same exposure. Just one last time, okay? No. Yes, Your Honor. I think it directly follows under Crawford versus Washington, the United States Supreme Court case. It's testimony. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm just all fired up, aren't I? You simply just don't recall. Is that fair enough? Right. Even after seeing this, just yeah, not a lot of. I hear what I said, but she has any good refreshment thing. I'm not. No, you're not. All right, uh, Mr. Rogers, your position as to admissibility under 8326 is substantive evidence. Okay. They said that before, I don't have the rule on is it for impeachment? No. no. Impeachment. 613 is for a prior inconsistent statement. And what the state is attempting to do is to admit a prior inconsistent statement for substantive evidence, not as to, to attack his credibility as a witness. So they're wanting to bring in these clips as proof of what happened at the time. And there's certain certain uh, safeguards that have to be met. Uh, it has to be a prior inconsistent statement. The court does find uh, the statements that have been played here are inconsistent with this testimony here today. 
it also has to be a recorded uh, statement, which it is. So the last part is, uh, during a jury out hearing, by preponderance of the evidence, is that prior consistent made under circumstances indicating trustworthiness. And so that's really the issue that we're arguing. Right, and, and, and my argument would be that you're trying to refresh his recollection. He's continuously saying it's not refreshing his recollection, although he's not denying saying those particular things or hearing himself say those particular things. Right. Um, I think to end around the testimony by playing a prior statement would be prejudicial and uh, it, did, it takes away from his testimony here today. And so I, I think that the reliability of the statement given at the time, especially when he's saying uh, certain things under duress, talking about possibly being called a snitch, also being on the scene of several places and possibly being a suspect maybe in his mind, that the reliability of his testimony today under oath in front of the jury is more reliable than the statement that he gave to an officer when he's trying to protect himself. All right. Mr. Jones, what do you say? I think the court's got a problem primarily under Crawford versus Washington's United States Supreme Court. I'd direct the courts to that. I'd ask you to well, look at that. Okay, I, I got you, I got you. Okay, I apologize, and I did not mean to impute that, okay? That being said, 541 U.S. Supreme Court 36, literally almost duplicious set of circumstances relative to a stabbing and a rape of a wife, and basically it violates the defendant's constitutional right to cross-examine because he cannot cross-examine that recorded statement, and it's inadmissible under that set of circumstances. But it's right here. I understand, but it says that you can't. I mean, I'm, I'm not the one who authored this, Justice Scalia. Offered. The witness didn't testify. Well, at this point in time, he said that he doesn't recall relative uh, to that. So to allow this to go in where he wasn't subject because it was recorded in anticipation of a legal proceeding. There's no question that Detective Leffler or what other personnel with the Knoxville Police Department were anticipating a legal proceeding relative to what had been going on relative to this particular recordation, Your Honor. I would ask the court to at least take some time and re-glance back at that before making that decision. Thanks, sir. All right. Uh, Ms. Lee, do you have any argument? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I agree with Mr. Jones. All right, very good. Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, no, Your Honor, we believe um, that the prior inconsistent statements, we believe that uh, this is a situation uh, that this case is, uh, is made for. Clearly, uh, this victim, he is reluctant. Your Honor, can take it. He is, he is scared. He, he can say that he's not, but you clearly we believe his body language shows that he is. Um, he is wearing sunglasses while he is testifying. Uh, we believe that uh, the statement that was given to the police that night, uh, uh, we believe that it appears to be credible. Um, he is someone who is trying to uh, tell the police what's going on. He is trying to be helpful with the police. Uh, we believe the circumstances in which he gave the statement to the police uh, indicate trustworthiness. Um, we believe that uh, under 803.26 that that is admissible. All right. So, 80326 was added to our rules of evidence not too long ago, really for situations exactly like what we're faced up here today. Normally, a, a statement that's made outside of court is hearsay and is inadmissible. Prior inconsistent statements uh, can come into uh, evidence at times in order to attack the credibility of the witness. So if they said something in the past that's different than what they're saying on the stand now, you can bring it in, not as substantive evidence for the jury to consider, but as evidence to consider whether or not they're telling the truth on the stand here. 80326 goes further than that, and it allows prior inconsistent statements to be admitted for the substantive evidence of the truth asserted in those out of court statements. And as I was mentioning, there are certain safeguards that the court has to follow. One is the declarant has to testify at trial uh, and be subject to cross examination uh, concerning that statement. Uh, and that obviously is what's going on right now. Uh, and I think that uh, defeats Mr. Jones' Crawford argument. Uh, the Sixth Amendment uh, issue that you have with these out of court statements is one of confrontation. And the person who made that statement is here in court and subject to cross examination. So I don't think it's a Crawford issue, uh, Sixth Amendment issue. The statement that is, in fact, a video recorded, which uh, we've seen as audio that we've played a portion of that uh, today. And uh, as I said, the really issue before the court is whether or not by preponderance of the evidence is that prior consistent, uh, inconsistent statement made under circumstances indicating trustworthiness. The court does find that it does. Uh, 
Mr. Charlie North said today uh, and to the police at the scene that he was going to be the one to talk to the police because uh, he was so upset uh, with uh, seeing his cousin uh, um, dying in front of him. And so it's kind of like an excited utterance. When somebody is in an emotional state like that, uh, they tend to tell the truth about what has just happened. And this interview occurred right after uh, it happened. Uh, and shortly, uh, almost immediately after speaking to the police, uh, Mr. North uh, was uh, allegedly shunned by these individuals and was subsequently uh, shot uh, for speaking uh, to the police. We heard that uh, testimony somewhat today, but but in much more depth during the first trial uh, when Mr. Williams was accused of shooting Mr. North. Uh, and so uh, I think that uh, the statement that Mr. North gave to Investigator Leffler uh, by policy evidence does indicate that it was a trustworthy statement that he gave at the time, uh, more so, I believe, than the statement that he's giving here. So I'm going to allow the uh, state to introduce those portions that they play under 80326 as a substantive evidence. And now, generally, you will need to put that on a separate disc because uh, the instruction that I'll give the jury is they cannot consider any out-of-court statements for their truth of the matter asserted unless entered as a numbered exhibit. So you're going to have to give it an exhibit number. All right? Yes, sir. All right, so let's bring it to you. I'm sorry, of course, just put it before we come to you. I would yeah, like to register contemporaneous for the objection to this being played based on the trustworthiness. Very well. Thank you. And you have to be clear, Mark, your honor wants me to play those clips. Just, those what, just what we played for him, and he said he didn't remember. Yes. Can we have, can we have oh, 10 minutes? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So wave, Your Honor. I want my close ready to present direct examination. Mr. North, you understand you are still on road, sir? Oh, I think that back. Go ahead, General. And sir, during uh, this break, you had the occasion to review uh, some clips the interview. Would you like to play those clips and make those Exhibit 558. Exhibit 558, Mr. And uh, for the record, we're going to have the transcript of just so everyone uh, knows the what the evidence is. All right, folks, the uh, video uh, the state is getting ready to put on the board here. Uh, we'll also have a transcript running alongside it. Now, that transcript is not the evidence. The evidence in this case is actually what is being said. The transcript is something that some secretaries just listen to and type in what they thought was being said. So if you think you're hearing something said that's different than the transcript, you're to ignore the transcript and go by what you have said. Now this item will be uh, with you in the jury room that you can look at or listen to, uh, and the same thing. If there's a transcript on there, you can't consider the transcript, just consider what's being said. It's just there to help you follow on our agenda. What did they say they did? They didn't say they, they just let like, honestly, they said, uh, like I said, it was about when you got over there around eight o'clock, maybe. Mm -hmm. They all just said it was, they were sleeping at nine o'clock. As soon as nine o'clock hit, I promise you, they all just walked out. Okay. They all just walked out. And my mom really so. Yeah, I know. And I, I, I know you don't want to. No, I'm not going to I know. I know. I, what, right now, you got to be yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Like, they didn't tell me anything. Like when I said they just walked out, they just walked out and like they were gone for about an hour or something. I text I uh, my brother Kid one night, just text me and let me know y'all okay, he like we straight from we about to pull back up out there. That's when they came back out to the Green Hills. That's what they said they did. They didn't say they they just let like honestly. They said, uh, like, this what did they say they did? They didn't. We could tell them good. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't want to get 
Joe's right on the line. So once you get in control. Yes, sir. But if you're sitting here and you don't tell me the truth, then you have a thing going on, sir. And I promise to God on that. Who was in that car when they left? I honestly think they were in two cars. And, um, of course, Frank <coughs> BB, I mean, Frank, he was the one who was the one who got shot. Craig Best is the one who got in there. Because that's his, his blood, blood cousin. Uh, Kill. Uh, let's see. Richard. I think that was him. That was in one car. Another car. I can't remember the same one person that was part of the lake. Malik what? Uh, I don't know what And what kind of car were they? Uh, he brought a, like a gold Cadillac. Gold Cadillac? Four door deal? Four. 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 How many people all together? Well, with me, I don't know how many was in his car. I can say five. At least five? At least five. You know of any more one? I'm sorry. I don't know. So at least five people, two cars. At least five people, two cars. Now we're going to run into the building and then they go. Mm -hmm. the was, was Malik wearing all black too? I know he had a little black hoodie for sure. No. How many guns did you see? I said they probably all have one. Each one? Oh, at least five. At least five. Are we talking handgun or are we talking long gun? Oh, uh, yeah, handguns. I don't know what they mean. They never take the. They feel like they can't carry no, no assault rifles or nothing. Can't do it with a big crane around. Right. Don't know exactly where they went, but they went somewhere on the west side. Mm -hmm. And like, when I say the west side, you know, they just feel like, probably like, west side of this line is still, you know, uh, uh, mechanic, mechanic still, you know, places like that. They ain't gonna talk about they just we just start listening to the music. I mean, when they say nine o'clock kid, we leaving. I don't know what time they came back, but they said nine o'clock, we leaving, we about to go get the whips. I hate to say all this about people are listening to my brothers, my family. Because I kinda of feel like I'm snitching, but I'm not, I just don't want myself to be in any trouble. But that's exactly how it So we watched the videos at the Green Hills where, right, where the car was crashed into the wall and you were on that scene, is that correct? And you were there? Yeah. Okay. And you were really upset. I mean, I think we're, in that video we just watched you, was that what you were wearing that night? The white shirt and red pants? Yeah. Okay. And it's on that video we see you upset and hitting a wall and, and you were very upset that night, is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. And then we also saw a video of uh, two gentlemen running after cars after the shooting that happened there. And that was you running after those cars, wasn't it? Well, I'm showing the video Okay. There's a video of a man in a white shirt, same kind of haircut, it looks like. was running after those cars and that was you running after those cars, wasn't it? Okay, not that was you shooting that gun at those cars, wasn't it? No. Okay. So if it's the same person wearing the white shirt that's slamming his fist against the fence or against the wall, that's not you? You can say something about shooting a gun. Can't shoot a gun if I don't go on. Okay. Well we we saw the video, so Yeah. Okay. And You're friends with all of these folks that are involved. You're friends with everybody that's sitting over this table. You were were friends. Yeah. Fair? Yeah. Brothers? Yeah. Okay. And then after this incident, you said that the relationship changed. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. You don't know who was talking to who, or, or you just, you weren't talking to anybody. Is that right? Uh -huh. Okay. But you did see him at a New Year's 
party. And then when you were speaking with the police officers that night, you went from the scene at Green Hills, is that correct? Uh -huh. Okay. And you were scared. You got to say yes or no. Yes. Okay. You were scared, right? Sure. And you didn't want to get into trouble? Sure. Okay. <coughs> now let's jump forward, let's jump forward to that April 1st day. You received text from what you thought was from Richard Williams, right? You had a text conversation that April 1st, 2016. Was that a phone number that you had for him, or is that you just came, you identified that number to Richard Williams? Yeah. You, that was his number. What's that? My, that was his number, bro. You recognize that number from before? <sighs> He's asking. When you got that text message, how did you know it was from Richard? Well, did not say to my phone? Well, did not have a name on top of it? I didn't see that. Uh, I'm not sure if he had that. So you assumed that you were speaking with Richard Williams, is that right? What is it? No, I, I know who I was talking to. Okay. Thank Why would you. I be talking to somebody I don't know who it is? I, I don't know. I don't know who it was. That's what I'm asking. I'm telling you, I know who it was. Okay. So during that conversation, you were basically setting up a time to, to get together, right? Yeah. It was, it was a casual conversation. Sure, Wanted to find some weed, right? Yep. <coughs> and that was the point of getting together, maybe getting his bag, right? Can we show him the, uh, what he said? He's coming to get the bag. Yeah, can we answer the question? I think he has answered your question. Okay. Can we? Just go ahead and finish your answer. Can we, can we, it's worth it. That's right. I, I think mm -hmm. that's a good memory if you remember what the point of the conversation was. From them text messages that I was shown, yes. like everyone else, just a few minutes ago. Yes. We were talking about that. Okay. Yeah. And you were supposed to meet somewhere else earlier. Is that correct? You met Cotton? No. There was not a text about meeting at Cottonfield? You said we were supposed to meet up somewhere else? When, when you were trying to say. I said, meet. where do you want me to bring this back to? And you said Cottonfield? I didn't say anything. Okay. You suggested that somebody didn't get a ride. Because some time passed, right? This was going on all day, these tests, for the most part, right? Yeah. Okay. And you suggested that he come to your place? Yeah. Okay. Or whoever. You suggested through those texts to come to your place, right? So, <coughs> okay. Whoever. And then you, you've testified, I mean, you've given testimony under oath before with regards to this, right? Okay, and and when you've testified, when you've spoken under oath previously, you have said that you didn't see who the shooter was. Is that correct? Sure. Who shot you? That is. Sure. It was dark. Sure. Okay. So you did not see who shot you. Sure. Okay. I'm not allowed to ask on that. Nah, he gets to ask the question. <laughs> Ms. Fitzgerald wants to ask additional questions after she can. So, All right, just listen to the next question. Go ahead, Mr. Rush. Whenever we were leaving, we saw an officer come up and talk to you. Do you have some kind of agreement with the state for your testimony today? So what? Do you have some kind of agreement with the state with regards to your testimony here today? Um, no. Has anyone coached you on what to say today? I didn't coach Did someone tell you no, what to test? I coach. I'm asking. Maybe. Okay. What was the officer talking to you between during the break all about? When? When we took a break, an officer came up and spoke he with said, you. I'm doing a good job. Okay. Dealing with this bullshit. All right. That's all I got, Judge. All right, Mr. Jones, for an answer. Mr. North, I represent Mr. Bassett, okay? I've got just some easy questions for you. Talk about the rap video, okay? You saw the video that the state showed you, correct? Yeah, I ain't seen that anymore. I got you, it's been a while. But y'all made not only that video, but several videos, right? Okay, and y'all went to the studio and you cut those, right? 
Cut those. Cut the, made the made the made the uh, music, right? Well, you tell me what you call it when you go to the studio. What do you call it? Record a song. Okay. So y'all went several times to the studio and you recorded a bunch of different songs. Excuse me. I used to live in the studio. Okay. And Mr. Bassett, all you guys that were in that video, at various times recorded songs together as a group, didn't you? Yeah. When you were asked earlier about what you had been doing earlier in the day, you indicated that you were chilling at somebody's apartment in Green Hills, right? What was that girl's name? All right. Let me ask you relative to this apartment that you were chilling at. Do you, and I want you to look at picture number 211. was an exhibit. Do you recognize that as the inside of T.H.'s apartment? Oh, that's the bedroom. Okay, yeah, the bedroom. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, that apartment where you were chilling, T.H.'s apartment, that photograph in 206 is the bedroom, right? <coughs> With the bed in? Okay. Okay. You spent most of your day there that day, December 17th, 2015? Yes. Uh, not most of my day. Most of the evening? Is it fair to say? About hours. Okay. And you came out when the car crashed into the building, right? Out from that building. Okay. You came out from another building? Okay. And they ask you about where they went. You don't know where they went as you sit here today, do you? No. Nothing further. Thank you. Now, this is the email. <coughs> Mr. North, do you remember when you all made that video? No. What, April 2015 sound? About right? I do not remember all the way in the video. Okay. Was it in the spring? I do not remember the all the way in the video. He doesn't uh, Okay. Okay, earlier when the state asked you about Mr. Colbert, you said, I don't think Kip came in. You recall saying that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Did he come in? Could you repeat the question? Okay. What you just said? I just asked you, do you recall saying, I don't think Kip came in? I don't think Kip came in. Okay. Did you see Kip, Kipling Colbert with a gun? Can yeah, I give me the date? What was this year again? You're talking, about, you're talking about December 17th. Yes, right? so December 17th. 15th, the night the car crashed into the apartment. I'm going to just say this. Look, this was two years ago. I got shot because y'all said this is a situation. I got shot because I'm trying to get this shit in behind me, in the back of my head. You feel me? Like, I don't remember this. I try to put this in the back of my memory. You feel me? Y'all keep asking me the same questions. Do I remember this saying it? Nah. Y'all got it recorded from what I said that day. 
What y'all what y'all what y'all ask me? Okay. I don't remember. You don't want to be here, do you, Mr. North? It's a hard to tell. Okay. Do you have a prescription for your glasses, Mr. North? I just want to be open. So you don't have a prescription? No, these were a gift. Okay. You just want to wear sunglasses today? Yeah. I don't want to do no direct contact today. That's all I have. Sorry, Drax. No, just real brief. I'm going to let you go. The uh, you said T.H. is apartment. T.H. is apartment. There was a 900 casing that was found in the apartment. Did you fire a gun to left the casing in her apartment? Did I fire a gun in a house? No. Hell no. And did you fire a, a gun outside the complex? According to this man, where are we? No, no, no. That's what we're asking you. According to him, I'm on video running up there for no, the no, I'm asking you, did you fire a gun? Now, um, you were asked about whether or not we've made some agreement with you? Whatever he's talking about. Um, uh, did Investigator Booker go and pick you up this morning and bring you down here? Yeah. Uh, did I go out and uh, buy some chicken minis uh, so y'all would have breakfast, you and your girlfriend? Yeah. General Morton bought some uh, orange juice? Yeah. And um, you were over in the conference room today? Yeah. And goodness knows you communicated to us that you did not want to be here. Yep. Uh, and did we ever tell you what to say? Nah. And are we going to give you a ride back home? I don't know. I ain't going to walk. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rogers, Mr. Jones, Steve. I've got a follow-up question. Miss <coughs> Fitzgerald asked you if you ever fired a gun. Let me ask you this. No, no, sir. No, sir. I said in that apartment that day. Yeah, that's a question. I, I, I got you. I, I, I'll get to that. I wasn't trying to restrict it. I'll agree as to the day. Miss Fitzgerald asked you if you ever fired a gun that, that day, December 17, 2015. Did Investigator Leffler ever take a gunshot residue test from you? Did he swab your hands? No, he didn't. Okay, nothing further. Ms. Lee? All right, Ms. Ms. Cole. Ms. Y'all got anybody in the bank? Okay. I do. Yeah, I'm going to put it right hand. You saw me swear for a firm that I'm going to have a case now on top of it. The truth is the whole truth, and that's about the truth I've got. Please have a seat, ma'am. You can speak now. Sasha Colbert. Ms. Colbert, do you live here in Knoxville? Yes. Yeah. And back in 2015, where did you live? Uh, 2704 Major Rock. How long have you lived there? Um, about three years, probably. Three or four years. And who did you live there with? Just my two children. And what are their names, please? Jayla Bowers and Jay Sean Colbert. And I'm going to ask you their ages. Um, at the time, they was nine and six. Now they're 11 and eight. Nine and six, 11 and eight. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, back in 2015, do you have a niece? Uh, she's her auntie is my best friend, and I consider my niece. I can watch her, you know, be raised for my life. And what's her name? Faith. And did Faith, uh, it, were you very, are you close to Faith? Yes. And back, in, especially back in 2015. Yes. Would Faith come to your house uh, regularly? Oh yes, all the time. And for what purpose? Oh, just to hang out. I'm one of the cool aunties. Okay. <laughs> so, and she used to watch my kids. So. Babysit your kids? Oh, yes, my own About how many times would you say that she'd come to that apartment to hang out, babysit your kids, or just visit? As of December 2015. Just December? As of that date, yeah. Oh, uh, multiple times. Probably more. More than 30, I guess. Okay. And are you still close to her? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
And uh, back, did she have friends that would come with her from time to time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know who some of those friends would be? Um, lots of girls. Um, her, her cousin would come, and any other cousins would come, and friends. And what, uh, was the Kiara Rucker, is that a friend of Yes, her? she was a regular. And did you know, you knew her as well? Yes. And were you fairly close to her as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, what uh, types of things would they do then when they came to your house? Normal teenage girl stuff, doing their hair on their farm black and being around, eating up all my food. Talking about boys? I'm sorry. Talking about boys? Yes. Okay. Um, now, I want to bring you back to uh, December 17th mm -hmm. of 2015, almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you recall that day in particular about what you did earlier in the day? Um, I went to work. I received a text message from Faith asking to her and Kira to come by okay. and spend the night. And spend the night? Mm -hmm. You know, and what you recall what hours you worked that day where you got that time? Oh, I know you work like at eight to five, so it's probably after five o'clock. After after work or after five is yes. when you got the test? Yes. And did you say that's okay? Yeah, I said it was fine. I told her I was off the next day. It didn't matter. And you remember how uh, that day uh, related to school, whether it's part of school or last day of school or anything like that? If you do fine, if you don't fine. I think so. Okay. Not so, uh, what did they have a specific time they were coming? No. They did. They just whenever yeah, they got there, saying, they got. There. I don't. I don't remember what time they got there. Okay. What do you recall it being light, dark, or how long they've been there? Uh, it was still kind of light. I think it was probably like in the evening time. Could have been around like seven or eight or so. I'm not for sure. That's fine. Could have been around six. I'm not for sure. So it was just the two of them at that time? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And what did they do when they got there? Um, what they usually do, they come in and on their phone. Um, I heard them in the downstairs bathroom doing their hair as usual. Um, <coughs> one time Faith came to me and said that she was going to walk to their friend house still live in the front of the projects. And I said it was fine to just take the door key to make sure the door was locked because me and the kids were upstairs and she did. I heard them go out. Lock the door. They locked the door, did mm -hmm. you say? Okay. Just the two of them? Yes. Did she did they say which friend they were going to visit? Oh, uh, I'm not for sure. I think it was Dewey, I'm not for sure. <clears throat> and you know who Dewey was at that time? No, I never met him. I always heard of his name though through the girls. Yeah. Now when they were when they would come over, uh, would they ever bring boys with them? Boys wasn't allowed in the house. And that was my next question. Is that was that one of your rules? That was one of the rules. My own rule. <laughs> and was there were there times when boys would come over but not be allowed in the house? Oh yeah, they can sit on the porch. Okay. And you say porch, which porch would that be? The front or the back. They just weren't allowed inside the house. Okay. So is that something that had happened before is my question. With where boys come where girls them. and boys would be on one of your porches? Oh yeah, all the time. All the time. All the time. Okay. Um, now, did you know uh, I'm taking on Dobson and Zach and those boys? Uh, I don't know through the, through the girls. I just knew them through the girls. Okay, you didn't, did, uh, had not, had you ever met them before, do you recall? Um, I can't remember. I think so, because one time I did allow the boys to come in the house. One time I think it was real cold or something, and it was the boys down there, and she introduced, but I'm not for sure. But I think so, because that was her regular friends and they always came by so and a, 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 a boy by the name of Xavier Malone did you know him too I just knew his name I didn't really know him okay. now December 17th you told us that they were there with the friend's house walking is that correct mm -hmm. did they come back yes you you know about what time did they might have come back uh if they didn't go they would have gone long so I don't, know. I don't know what time. Okay. What did they do when they came back? Uh, I just heard them come in laughing as usual, talking, being loud. I heard the door keep opening and out on the back on the back porch. I kept hearing it, but I didn't think nothing of it. Just what they always do. Now, what were your children doing at that time? My kids was in my daughter room playing. It playing? Yeah, watching what we supposed to. Yeah. Is that an upstairs or downstairs room? Upstairs. Uh, is it a bedroom? Yes. And, and you say they were playing? Yeah, they're supposed to be watching the movie. And you say supposed to be watching the movie. Were they not watching the movie? No, I heard them arguing. Okay. 
and uh, did, as a mother, did you have to deal with that situation? Um, yeah. That time, though, I was on my phone watching a YouTube video, so I just let them argue and talk about what they wanted to do. Okay. So, yeah, it's not like I had to come in and run into your room. Mm -hmm. Is that an upstairs room as well? Yes. And at, at, when all that arguing and them coming to your room was going on, where were Faith and, and Kiara and anybody else? They would have to be downstairs. Um, like I said, I kept putting the back door open and closed, so they had to be outside and coming in like they usually do. Now, while all that was going on, uh, uh, was there a time uh, when something started to happen? Uh, well, my my two my two kids came in the room and they said something was wrong with the DVD player. So I got up and went and checked and see what was wrong. And one of them had to knock it down because the three cards, the uh, white, red, and yellow plugs in the back of it was broken inside of the DVD player. Okay. So I was like, y'all didn't mess it up. Y'all just gonna have to go lay down. You know, like playtime is over with. Which they was begging though, but I still walked to my room and I shut the door and got back on my phone. And then they came right behind me and was asking, please, can we go downstairs? And I kept saying no, and I kept saying no. And something was like, well, y'all just let them go down there because they wanted something to drink. And I said, okay, go down there and come right back. So I heard my kids going down the steps and I heard them go in the kitchen because the walls are real thin so you can hear everything. And I heard them open up the refrigerator door so with that time frame, I just heard what I thought I heard about four or five shots. And I was kind of shocked in a way. Like, am I hearing what I'm thinking I'm hearing? So I paused my video that I was watching on YouTube and I was still sitting there for a while just trying to see if I heard anything or something. And I heard more shots. So at that time, this is when I got up and I was scared and I was trying to make myself walk, but I was so scared I remember just walking slow to the steps. And when I was walking, I was calling my kid's name and nobody would answer me. Like I didn't hear anything. It was just quiet. How did that make you feel? My heart, I, I ain't feel good at all. What's the next thing? Um, I just kept calling for my kids and nobody would never answer me so I just started going down the steps. To me it felt like <clears throat> I couldn't get down the steps fast enough but by the time I can get like to the half of part of the steps because it's like a, like it goes down and then it curves so when, it, when I came to the curve part I, was, I looked down and I could see my daughter looking up at me. So I was like, where your brother at? Where's Jay Sean? And when I said that, he come running up the steps and they both just start running. So I was like, y'all go upstairs, go upstairs, go in the room and lay down. They shooting outside, going upstairs. So when we all ran upstairs, I went back to my room and grabbed my phone off the bed. And that's when I started hearing the girls call my name. Hey, she was at, uh, calling my name. Okay. So I was like, what was that? Everybody just, y'all need to get down, y'all need to get down, they shooting. And before I knew it, was calling 911. Faith and Kira was already up the steps with me. I'm at the top of the steps. And when she looked at me, Faith, she was just like, what was that? What was that noise? I just looked at her while I was talking to the, the operator, the police lady or whatever. Like, that was gunshots. What you talking about? Like, they shooting. Who the hell outside? What the hell going on? Like, I don't know. I just started losing it. And then when I looked over, I looked over. Like, my kids is looking at me still in their room with the door open and everything. I was like, didn't I tell y'all to get down? Like, get down, what y'all doing? And then they just look and make up me and I just look like, oh, the window busted out. They can't get down because my daughter bed and everything is right there by the window. So I said, y'all just come in my room. Everybody just go in my room. So everybody just run in my room. I shut the door. The girls was crying. My kids was looking shocked. And at the time I was talking to the lady, she's telling me to calm down, like what's going on? I just keep on screaming at my address to her. But I guess I was screaming so loud, she couldn't understand me. So she was like, please just calm down and just talk to me. So I was finally able to talk down and calm down and talk to her. And once I realized like, could have lost my kids, like, if I wouldn't allow them to go downstairs, then they would have been upstairs in the room. And then my daughter, she just as tall as me, like she was tall at the time, just as she is now, like somebody would have got hit and it just hit me. I just started crying and screaming. 
hugging my kids, like looking up to the sky, like thank you God, and then a the girl starts screaming and crying, and everybody just start crying, and it was just crazy. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this minute. I may approach. So. Yes, sir. <coughs> no objection. You chose. And the photograph. That's what you that's a picture on my head is on the steps. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. We move. That is. I think that's probably 58. Yeah. No. 558 is now. That's all the evidence. Any objections? No, you're not. see if I can see them breathe or anything and I didn't see them breathe. I just automatically just shut the door and locked it and was telling the lady like if somebody dead on my porch I need to get her now. Like get her now. And in, in the process I turned around and Faith was behind me on the steps. So she saw me open up the door and she just started screaming and crying. Now at that time when all this started happening did you know that there were uh, young boys out on your porch with the girls? Did you, did you know who all was on your back porch? No, I never. Okay. Uh, and did Faith, in, in all this uh, going on, did Faith tell you who all had been there? Well, when she was screaming and crying, she was like, this baby on right there. And did you did you know who it was at the time you saw her? No, I just saw a young man. And she told you who it was? That, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> what happened after that? Uh, I started, uh, she was crying. I think we started going up the steps and we got a knock at the door and I just looked at her and she looked at me and I was like, who was that? Who can that be? She was like, I don't know. She was just crying, just shaking her head. So I heard him, whoever was at the door, it was like, it's Zach, it's Zach, let me in, let me in. And then she was like, that's his brother. And I was like, no, he don't need to be here, he need to go home. And she was like, no, we gotta let him in, that's his brother. So I just opened the front door and he came in he was like, what's going on? Is everybody okay? Where everybody go? Okay. 
Faith was crying. And I was just staring at him. And he kept looking at us. And then she was like, it's Zavion or something. And he was just like, what you mean? I said, baby, you need to go home. Like, you need to go home. He was like, no, what's going on? And we just pointed at the back door. And he went, he started walking through my kitchen and opened up the back door. He just took off his shirt. I took it as in, he wanted to pick up the blood or something. He just started crying. He just kept saying, get up. And I said, baby, I think he got one already. He just shut the door. He turned around. He looked at me. He was crying. And he just ran at my, my front door and just took off running. I just shut the door. We all just went upstairs. Do you know where Zach went? I took it as he was running home from him. I didn't know at the time, but until after the fact, I knew where he stayed at. So I took it. He was running home. And who all went back upstairs? Just me and baby Pierre was still upstairs with my kids. Okay. I thought, I'm um, not for sure. What happened after that? I got the phone with the lady with the, the 911 lady. I guess she said it, the police was on their way or something. I don't know, but I just ended up hanging up the phone. I just still was mad, couldn't believe somebody just shot up my house. Like, I just couldn't believe it. The first thing to my mind was, Whoever the fuck did this, excuse my language, I'm about to get them back. I just called one of my friends, like, dude, somebody just shot my house up. He was trying to tell me to calm down. At that time, I just went out the front door and was talking to him, like, no, somebody just shot my house up, dude. And when I was when I walked out the front door on the phone with him, it was a black BMW backing up out of my front driveway. And I was still on the phone with him though, like I had my head down walking down the steps, like, no, dude, somebody just shot my ass, so I almost lost my kids. It pulled off. And I was still on the phone with my friend. And you recall which direction the black BMW went? It went uh, left, going down here. Going toward what part of town? Like going towards Texas, the front street, towards the office. And that still in Lonsdale community? Mm -hmm. Yes. Were you able to see how many people were in that black BMW? Not really, because I was on the phone, I was paying attention, but I wasn't. So they pulled off, but by, by the time I was walking down the steps, like I said, they already been pulled off, and I was still on the phone with my friend, telling him what was going on. Then out of nowhere, I see the black BMW again. This time it's on the opposite side. It's like it's still right there by my building, but it's on a different side of the street now. And they just like, they sitting there looking at me, I'm sitting there looking at them. I couldn't see who was in the car or what. I just saw those people in there, but I'm still on the phone. Like, I'm loud as hell, like, somebody just shot my ass. Blah, 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 blah. Then, boy, they were still sitting there. I'm like, around that time, I didn't even see Zach come back. He was in my front yard. Faith was in my front yard. He ever was. My kids weren't out there. So, I had a neighbor come and tap me on my shoulder. She asked me what's going on. Something, I don't know, I just couldn't. Boy, I just kept looking at the car. I'm like, what the hell? So I asked the kids, like, y'all know who in this car? Y'all know who in this car? Just asked all the kids. All the kids crying. Everybody shaking their head no. So I told my neighbor, I said, look, you might need to go in the house because something don't feel right about this car. I told the kids, y'all need to go in the house right now. I don't trust this car. Everybody go in the house. We all ran up the steps, went in the house, locked the door. And did the police arrive uh, mm -hmm. shortly thereafter, I guess? Yeah, it seemed like they took forever. And when they did come, and they, say, uh, they tended to Xavier on the back porch. As far as, did you see any of that, what they yeah. did to the police? Yeah, I just got my keys at the house and took them across the street. I, I see. At some point, did the police uh, come in and take pictures of your house? Yes. And did you see the various places they were taking pictures of? Yes. And do you remember anything? in the kitchen area being discovered by the police. Yeah, it was a, a shell casing right there in front of my window, my kitchen window, right where my my daughter and my son was. Like Later on that day, the next day or whatever, when I let my kids come and call my daughter, show me where she was in the kitchen, where the shell casing was. And some, either a bullet or a casing? You yeah, it was like a shell casing. Okay. I don't know what Okay. And you mentioned earlier about a window being shot out. Was yes. it still shot at when you returned? Yes. And do you remember anything else about that window being shot at? Yeah, just all on the, on the right side. It was all shattered. And what, excuse me, whose bedroom was that where that window was shot at? My daughter's. Your daughter's? Yes. And did 
Uh, what about your son? Was there a separate bedroom for him? Yes. And where where was it in relation to the daughter's bedroom? Right next to him. Okay. Did you notice any uh, damage in your uh, son's bedroom? Yes, it was a bullet. It came through and went over his uh, bunk bed. The, the top or bottom part of the bunk bed? Uh, I think it was the top. They couldn't. It didn't have no exit though. The police, when they was doing the crime and stuff, it didn't have no exit. It was stuck in the wall. And that was your son's bunk bed? Yes. You recall any other damage to the inside of your apartment? Yes, in yeah. my uh, laundry room right. where the bullet stopped in front of my daughter's window. It came through, went through the laundry room, went through the door, and laid it right there in front of the window. Okay. Any place there? In my bathroom, to the downstairs bathroom. Any other places inside that you remember where there were bullets or casings or damage? No, just on the outside. Okay. And your, did you see places on the outside of your apartment that had been damaged that had not been damaged before? Oh, yes. Did you recall that how many? No, that, that's fine. It could have been about six or seven or more. I don't know. It was, it was all over the building from where my house was and then towards the burning back to where everybody else. And do you recall seeing any uh, other damage on the back porch where Xavion had been? Yes. Yeah. What do you recall about damage back there? Uh, it was a bullet hole in my, in my shed uh, door and on my porch area. The rails. And did you cooperate with the police that night and mm -hmm. talk to them and tell them everything that you knew? Mm -hmm. That uh, apartment, is it an apartment or townhome? It's an apartment. Apartment. Is that here in Knox County, located in Knoxville, Knox County? Yes. Passwords. Morning, Mr. Colbert. Good afternoon. I uh, just want to clarify a few things that uh, you said to General Morton on that night in question, uh, back on December seventeenth, twenty fifteen. You said that you had your kids inside. You've got two two children, two small children, and that uh, you testified that. Uh, you had been upstairs. You heard them arguing downstairs around the uh, around the refrigerator. No, I heard them arguing in the other uh, room. Oh, okay, All right. And, but subsequently, at some point in time thereafter, you heard you heard what you recognized as gunshots. Yes. You were upstairs in the apartment. You said, <laughs> correct. And you were able to you walked toward the stairwell. You were able to get your children back upstairs. Yeah, once I walked down the stairs. Understand. And at that time, you testified later on, you didn't know who was outside other than uh, the Faith and Kiara. Yeah. Okay. Didn't have any idea who else was out there. No. Um, and you subsequently dialed 911. You were one of the people that called 911 when the, when the shots were fired yeah. outside that you heard, right? You stayed on the phone with, with the 911 operator. Yeah. And uh, after a period of time, did the, did the, uh, did the shooting stop? Truthfully, I don't know. I have no clue what, what I, over two years, when I get told, when I tell my stories, everybody say I must have blacked out or something because there's many gunshots that were shot. I shouldn't have still been up calling for my kids. That's fine, but you, you stayed upstairs until you didn't hear any more shooting. Fair, fair assessment. You didn't walk out and there was still shooting going on, is what I'm asking. Oh, no, I can't recall that. Okay. Because, like I said, it's me gunshots. shots. When I was calling for my kids, they had to still be shooting. Okay. But you went out a certain a point in time later. Once to, I started hearing the second gunfire. The first time I sat there for a while, I didn't hear anything. And then the second time is when I got up. Mm -hmm. You went downstairs, you testified, and opened the door. And that's when you saw Mr. Dobson laying there on the porch. Yes. Yes. All right. And then after that, there were people started to gather at the scene. Is that a fair assessment? I mean, there were there were people. It stirred up some people, and they were uh, coming around outside. You said that you said that Zach had run off at that time. 
And that's yeah, Zach Dobson. I, I can't remember if he was outside because I was still inside. Okay. So, so you, you were still inside during yeah. that time? Okay. All right. Well, you testified at one point, though, that you noticed a black car outside. Mm -hmm. I think you said it was a black BMW. Yes. And that was after the shooting had yes. ended, though, correct? Yes, after I called and I everything. Okay. And that BMW drove off, you said? Yeah, when I was coming out the front door, they was automatically backing out. Mm -hmm. So I just saw them backing out. You didn't see who was in the BMW, though, no. did you? You, in fact, had a conversation with, with Zach afterwards didn't you about that car yes and didn't zach tell you that he had gone up to the car to tell them to leave this leave the area because of the shooting yes to get them out of the area and was there a it's my understanding there was a white female in the car at that time was that correct I don't know. okay I see. okay but as far as the shooting goes outside you can not only could you not tell who was on your porch visiting you couldn't tell who was outside doing any kind of shooting either, could no, you? No, I never looked outside. Well, have you? Please. Good afternoon, Ms. Colbert. Was there a light on on either porch, the back porch or the front porch? I don't know. I don't think so. Not on the front porch. I don't know about the back. I never went out. When I just opened up the door, the light wasn't on. Okay, what, is that when you saw Xavier on? Yeah, no light was on. No light was on? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That's all I have here. Yes, sir. Name, please, sir. Uh, Jonathan Chadwell. And by whom are you employed? The Knoxville Police Department. And in what capacity? I'm a police sergeant right now. I'm assigned to the Internal Affairs Unit. Uh, how long have you been with the Knoxville Police Department? Uh, since 2001. And back in 2015, what was your assigned duty? I was a patrol sergeant on night shift. And night shift would be what hours? What hours? We worked from 10 in the evening until uh, 8 in the morning. Uh, were you employed back also employed back on December 17, 2015 and on into December 18, 2015? Uh, yes, sir. And what uh, were your duties at that time that hour? Um, I was a police sergeant over a squad on night shift. About 2 o'clock in the morning were you working that yes, I was. night shift at that time? And did you respond to a call or a series of calls involving gun incidents uh, that night? Uh, yes, sir. And you recall which one you responded to? Um, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, we responded to uh, Green Hills Apartments um, on a shooting with a vehicle into a uh, apartment building. And did you respond to that location? Uh, yes, sir. So about how long it took you to get there? Um, probably maybe four minutes. Okay. I was pretty close. I was right there at 10 o'clock Parkway. Were you in a Mark Cruiser? I was in a Mark Cruiser. Is that a Cruiser equipped with uh, video, audio, video recording equipment? Yes, it is, sir. Tell us what you did when you got there. Um, I arrived on the scene, pulled up. Uh, you can see the vehicle into the apartment building. Uh, there was an individual outside that was walking around, a little bit upset. He hit the garbage can a couple times um, with his fist. Uh, I went over to check in the vehicle. He went back and hit the garbage can again. So at that time, I got a hold of him, which his name was uh, Mr. North. He gave me his name was Larry North at the, at the time. Uh, moved him back away from the scene and told him he needed to calm down. Uh, He's very upset, uh, very emotional. Um, he, he said he calmed down, calmed down a little bit. Um, he talked to me for just, just a little bit, said that he, uh, it was his uh, cousin that had been shot, that's what he gave me. 
his time. Uh, give me his name is uh, Brandon Perry, I believe was his name, but he gave me. Um, talked to him for a little bit, uh, sort of a little bit of a chaos scene. Uh, there was an individual in the apartment that was stuck inside the apartment but couldn't get out, so they called for fire department to come and do that too. Um, whenever I was there, I dealt with Mr. North for most of the, the incidents who I spoke with. Um, he told me that uh, he was inside, heard gunshots from outside, seeing the vehicle into the building. Um, when I was talking to him, he also told me that uh, it was uh, game related to give me that uh, 400 was one of the, he said it was the involved 400s. So, and that was pretty much our conversation. Um, Mr. Uh, there was Mr. Bassett was there. Uh, he was uh, wearing a black shirt. Uh, I tried to speak with him a little bit, but he wouldn't, wouldn't speak with me. Um, he was very upset, very emotional. Uh, he gave information that uh, he was there on whatever talk to me, he wouldn't give me any information or talk to me or anything. Okay. Um, and you'd say the scene was rather chaotic? Yes. Were there other officers that were assisting and trying to secure that scene? There was. Uh, Lieutenant Malone was, he, he pulled in right behind me. Uh, he actually, after being at first a little bit, he started putting up crime scene tape. And uh, that's when I moved Mr. North out. He started putting up crime scene tape shortly after that. Was Mr. North inside that crime scene tape at some point in time? Uh, yes, he was. And is that part of what you had to do is to get him out of there? Yes, I, I moved him away so he wouldn't be around there. He was very upset. Hit the garbage, I think he hit the garbage can a couple of times. I believe it was twice, if I recall correctly. And uh, were you able to get him calmed down a little bit? Yes, he, he calmed down a little bit. And then a little bit later, he got a little bit more upset. Um, and he was going back and forth. He was sort of angry, upset. Then he was emotional a little bit, so he was going both sides. Do you recall whether or not he was answering your questions or cooperating yeah, with you? He was cooperating and answering my questions. He said that. Objection, it wasn't clear in what sentence we were saying, uh, uh, as far as what he said. Well, it, it, what was he, it, let me ask it this way was his, what was his demeanor like the whole time? Um, he was, uh, he was, he was, he was a little upset and emotional, but man, if you ask him a question, he gives you information, told me he was on probation. Uh, he told me. Yeah, you, you can't say what he, You can describe his demeanor, and if it's proper enough, you can't say what he said. Okay. What was his demeanor like? He's, he mentioned he was he, upset. Yes. Hit, hit trash cans and so forth. Yeah, he calmed down. Just, uh, he, he would, he would just talk to me and give me anything. I mean, if I asked him information, he would respond back to me. Okay. And then you say he was upset after giving you information to back and forth. I thought. Yeah, he, he would. Uh, he was upset when we first got there. Uh, calmed down, and then he sort of he was a little bit more upset, and then he he calmed down a little bit. So it was <coughs> going up and down. And uh, well, and you say this. Uh, your interact. Some of your interactions and your, your response is captured on video yes. on the camera. We'll play a portion of that. We can approach this. Yeah, but I was giving a chance to do it. I need to send you out and take up a little item of insurance. Please call the Sussex Case for sales. You know, it's a chair. Tell us you want to do it. I'm approaching that scene.
Knock stop. Was that Mr. North banging on the yes. garbage can and, and you're and steering him away? came in there was who that belongs to that voice the one that was crying that was, yes yes that was mr bassett okay. no, I don't know. i'm sorry in fact i think too they called me by chris okay yeah say it too Thank <laughs> you. 
You know who's you're talking to now? Who's saying those words? Uh, Females, did you know who they were? I'm not for sure on the came down some but we say he's still under the stress of the startling event just finding his cousin shot dead in well, well some point. of it i would say yes it's related to the event but some of the things that are being said are not related like him saying i'm gonna be the one to talk to you i don't think that's really related to the startling event i mean that's that's a declaration that he's making but he's not saying what he just saw or what just happened well I, he's i mean he's asked what happened and he's it responds wow. with i'm going to tell you what okay. i'm going to tell yeah, you but, but he didn't say, here's what happened. Part of it is, part of it, I would say, yes, the things that are related to the startling event, there, there's a lot of it that's not. Like he says, uh, 
Yeah, I'm probably going to film my phone. It says, uh, yeah, go ahead. It says, uh, you know who did this? And the store says, no, I just came outside. They said it happened. Um, and then he says, who is this? He says, Brandon Perry. Um, that stuff is related to it, but saying, I'm, I'm the one that's going to talk to you. I don't think that's related to the start of the event. Um, he also said uh, his mom just got shot today. That probably is, no, I don't even think that's related to it. So I mean, this, if you can point out to me the specific things that you want in there, I can address those. But I don't think the whole thing comes in as a side of that. Uh, you know, toward the end, he's, uh, he, he mentions, as already, Officer Chad has already testified, that this is 400, this is gang related stuff. That's related to the. Well, I haven't heard that yet. Uh, okay, well, I, I mean, it's toward the end of it. I haven't gotten that far. But you look at the time relative to it, we're 11 or 12 minutes out. He comes up there, that's him that just shook hands. It can be hours later, so I'm just still on the. I'm going to let you get to the relevant part. Right, I'll get to the <coughs> I think it's about two twenty. Is it what time? It's close to the end of about two twenty. get that Crawford issue you know you, before you said when I talked about the state having the problem that well Mr. Norris there to be cross-examined well Mr. Norris not there to be cross-examined I have the officer there to be cross-examined and it's an attempt to try to get this in in addition he repeatedly answers I don't know I don't know three times before then he says you know what's this about and then says 400 I mean I, I 
I'm precluded from any cross examination. Well, here, here's here's the thing. Um, usually, usually excited utterances aren't. You don't run into a Sixth Amendment Crawford issue because generally, by their nature, they are not um, uh, made in the furtherance of future litigation. <coughs> Even questions from police uh, at times uh, can be to respond to that specific emergency. And so that is really what this one boils down to. I would say Mr. North is under the uh, stress or excitement of the event uh, at the time, um, and he's telling them what he's going to talk to them about. When the officer is asking him the questions from the beginning that we're listening to, they're clearly trying to identify. Uh, who did this so they can respond to the ongoing emergency. So I would say that uh, uh, when you look at these questions being asked, because they're trying to figure out what's going on so they can respond to the, to the ongoing emergency. What I'm concerned about the response here is Mr. Norris' response is a much broader, uh, he's talking about everything that's going on that whole night, which obviously we brought in a lot of, a lot of uh, testimony about these other shootings because they're all interconnected. That's really my concern is are we trying to respond to this one specific incident that Mr. North is under the excitement of, or are we talking about everything else that's happened uh, this whole night? And what is the officer's intent in trying to gather this information from him? Is it for some future prosecution of the people involved in it, or are they trying to figure out who did it? So, you know, what do you say? No, I think Officer Chad will can say that all he was inquiring about was this one event. He's trying to find out what went on in Green Hill with his car. What were you asking, we asking, we asking him about when he responded? This is all about 400. I was asking what happened here on this event. That's what the whole thing was about. Well, you might want to clarify. <laughs> yeah, and I, just so I'm clear, the other, all the other events that happened before this event. Had you been a part of that, those investigations at all? Did no. you had you responded to them at all? I don't respond to any of them. Okay. Let's leave you here first. Hi, Ms. Rodgers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any questions? Uh, well, I think it's what's in the mind. How many questions do they have? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. It's also by its very definition. I mean, you can ask any questions. No. We're, we're, I'll, I, are you wanting me to ask questions to my guard? Yeah. Well, I guess you don't care what I do, but that being said, are you wanting me to ask questions? Yeah, if, is it my opportunity? Is your opportunity to cross me on this issue. Okay. Officer Chad will relative to this issue, this issue alone, I'm not waving my cross relative to other parts. I'm going to confine it to this issue. Um, he had already told you that he was inside and didn't see anything. Right? Right. Okay. So when then you ask him what's going on, you can't be talking about just this incident because you already know that man was inside and he can't have known what was going on. I mean, he could, he could have talked to anybody. There could have talked to anybody, yeah. but he didn't see anything because he told you he was inside, right? He did, but I think he also said that he was there and he said he was inside that residence too. Right. So anything that he would have told you would have just been his speculation. He couldn't have seen it or observed it on his own. How did you know? I mean, I don't know. Exactly. You don't know. Right. Nothing further. No. You know, this is a this is a close call. My my, my biggest concern is, is something that the defense attorneys pointed out was is I think this would have been better off if Mr. North was up here on the stand and let them cross him on that. I, by the letter of the law, the state may be able to get it in there through that uh, and not have a Sixth Amendment issue. But I think the better practice would have been to ask Mr. North about it, and, and then we could have gotten this time. But I, I will say this, that I did, well, worth, I did ask Mr. North, and he denied making the statement. You, did you ask him? Yes, sir. You asked him? Was, yes, I asked him two questions. Uh, did you say that it was 400? Uh, did you tell the police officer that it was gang related? Wouldn't that make it more testimonial then, Judge? No, because he denied making the statement, and I've got to... And she could have refreshed his memory with regards to it and chose not to. No, no, she had this video. I can impeach him. No, but he's not on the stand. Yeah, I think, you know, if you'd asked me, I probably would have let you brought it in. Yes, sir. I think that's your cell. I really don't want you to comment on that. Yes, sir. I'm going to disallow it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, let's bring it back.
Yep. Yeah. Chadwell, you, you told us uh, when you responded that you made contact with Mr. Bassett and Mr. North in particular. Yes, sir. You said Mr. North uh, was cooperative with you. Yes, sir. Is, and uh, your camera, was it running, I guess, the entire time that you were on that scene? Yes, it was. And uh, was, there, was it able to capture his interaction with other officers? Yes. In, in particular, uh -huh. Lu Lieutenant Malone? Yes. And were you able to review that and find a portion where he was being cooperative with Lieutenant Malone. Yes. And is that demo or is that shown on this crude video? Yes, it is. It's a, a, a portion without audio, about 40 seconds. Judge, if we'd like to play that. And, uh, not that I'm aware of, I'm out. I'll just give a little bit of lead. And, and just so we know, who is Mr. North depicted in this? Yes. And describe what he's wearing. He's in the uh, white shirt, with sort of that looks like a little bit of a pinkish color pants in this pitch in the video. Okay. And who is that officer right there? That is a Lieutenant Malone. And what's happening there? They're shaking hands. <coughs> Where do they go? They go uh, right behind the crime scene tape. And, and they're having some type of conversation. <coughs> okay. And uh, were there other people around when all that happened? Yes. Lots of people? There's quite a few, yes. Did I can make a late file exhibit with that clip? Uh, I'll, I'll need to prepare it. No objection. I'm sorry, 460. Was it 460? I'm sorry, 560. Password. Relative to the Green Hills scene, you rolled up along with Lieutenant Malone, correct? Uh, yes, he pulled him behind Okay, but approximately the same time? Yes. Yeah. Within just a second or two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And when you got on the scene, you were a sergeant. Were there other patrol units there, or were you the first officer then to arrive? Um, I don't know exactly. I mean, there might have been one other officer, but I can't say for sure. Okay. When I got there, I went up to the vehicle to check the vehicle. <coughs> okay. The, when you're talking about the vehicle, the you're talking about the BMW that's physically in the apartment. In the apartment. I mean, the, the crashed into yes, it. Yes, the crashed into Okay. And relative to Lieutenant Malone, you being a sergeant, then he would have been your supervisor, correct? Yes, he is. Who did you task, or who did you see Lieutenant Malone task with a crime scene log? Uh, 
Uh, okay. Based upon the standard operating procedure in the general orders of the Knoxville Police Department, someone's supposed to do a crime scene log, aren't they? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And if you don't know, would you expect that Lieutenant Malone would know? Um, possibly. Okay. That being sort of in the hierarchy of command, patrol officer, then sergeant, then lieutenant, right? Yes. Okay. And there were a lot of folks in and about that area, correct? Citizens that came out of the apartments after this happened, right? Yes. Kind of chaotic? Yes. And one of the individuals that you saw visibly upset, emotional, crying, was Christopher Bassett, right? Uh, Mr. Bassett, yes. Nothing further. Thank you, sir. Carol? No, nothing further. Ms. Lee? Mm -hmm. right. Thanks, sir. Ms. Sessions, there you go. Attorney, please, sir. All right, folks. Uh, we have now reached a point where the next witness is going to be rather lengthy. And rather than starting that and stopping the middle, we're going to go ahead and uh, adjourn for the evening. So I'm going to send you home with uh, the same instructions that I sent you with last night. That is not. Not discuss this case with anyone. Please avoid uh, all media coverage about this case. Again, I caution you about watching any local news channels or any words that might be uh, about this case. If you're on the DVR show, it's probably best to do it that way. You can watch it later. Um, also, avoid social media if uh, you have anybody that follows reporters or if you follow any reporters, they tweet about this stuff and you know, see stories linked to it. I don't want you to expose anything. First thing tomorrow, I'm going to ask you. If you're exposed to anything about this case, and anybody talk to you about it, so please uh, avoid any of those concerns. Tomorrow, so i got a very short docket, uh, but I do have a couple things I need to address before I get to this case. I'm going to work that docket between 9 and probably about 9 and 20. So I want you to be here by 9 20 tomorrow, uh, and then we'll start somewhere uh, around 9 30. We'll be here about 9 20. Again, we're going to keep your notebooks locked up for you tonight. Have a good night, folks. Thank you, notebooks. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. <coughs> All right, Fred Tennessee. All right, General, there's any information I know we needed to address this evening. What can we do first? All right. Um, I sent this tape uh, asking the court for permission to play Vanessa Mays' uh, in car video, and that's going to capture uh, some statements made by Chris Bassett. But to be fair, there's going to be other stuff captured in the background. Okay. Um, it's going to be probably his family members crying, probably excited, but. Can you cue it up for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, Vanessa Mays? Is that the, uh, at the beginning when she gets there?
voice there is going to be Mr. Miller. Right. Okay. Oh. Bitch ass nigger, you ain't my dad. 
duck pig. I mean, I, that's I hear something totally different. I heard stop talking. And it, it sounds like I heard yes. stop talking, but then I hear, but then it sounds like Larry Norse voice. I think the okay. I mean, it doesn't sound like Chris Bassett. You hear shut up, Chris. So it imputes that maybe it's Chris, but it sounds like Larry Norse voice. Okay. I'm going to find that there's sufficient uh, evidence for the admissibility. I understand why there may be uh, uh, an argument that something else is being said or somebody else is, but it, listening to the voices uh, based upon what I heard earlier, uh, it does appear to me that that was Mr. Bassett uh, who, who said that. What I heard was stop talking around these. Um, and so that's why I, I could be wrong about that, Mr. Jones. You're right. It's, it's tough to hear. I, I, can, I see your argument. But I think I think there's sufficient reason to believe that, that that is what's being said by Mr. Bassett that it should be allowed. And obviously, that comes in uh, not as an excited utterance, but that comes in as a statement by a party opponent. Uh, and uh, the other stuff is clearly an excited utterance is by the females. Um, I guess my question is one of relevance on that. What's the relevance of bringing in the rest of that? The rest of it, but leading up to that. Say what now? What's the relevance of all the stuff leading up to that statement? Just putting it in context. Well, I mean, that's what this is. This is the state's the state's who's position. Who's going to talk to? Who's, who's going to talk to the police? And who's not? Yes, and the and the reason. Was Parker that night? And, and the reason why he makes that statement, we believe, is because he is seeing Larry North out in the open talking to the police, shaking their hands, and he's. The state's position, we believe, is stop talking around these pig ass niggas. And then, uh, in, while in the back of Miss Mays' uh, patrol car, uh, she asked him, Why do you not like the police? Or why do you hate the police so? She said that to She says, She asked Mr. Bassett that in the back of the patrol car. All right, well, I'm going to allow you to play it, uh, General. The, the parts that Mr. North said on this part are not what that was concerning me about saying it's <coughs> yes. about the gang stuff. So he's already said he told him he's going to be the one to talk to the police, and we'd already heard that. The female's clearly uh, talking, uh, is excited about it, talking about who was in the car yes, um, and what had just happened. So I think that's okay, and it, it does provide some context to saying about why people are talking right then around the police. So I'm going to allow you to, to play it, you know. Yes, all right. Uh, anything else from the state? What, what we heard is that what you want me to clip up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Did, you know, end it where you ended it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I just want to get the time stamp. Yeah. And then what the, the I believe Mr. Rogers and I share a position. And okay. Ms. Lee, you want to address it, Mr. Rogers? Yeah. Mr. Rogers, you got it. At the beginning of uh, Officer Shadwick's testimony, there was a question yeah. about Larry North saying 400s. I believe he testified that he said 400. I did not object contemporaneously because it was already out. But since we've already we discussed him saying that, Chadwell said North. Chadwell North. said North East. said North. I'm not. I do not want a jury instruction or anything to point it out again. Not in But I would like to know to prevent the state from arguing that Larry North said for him. That's that's yeah. my position. Yeah, right. Since you're looking at us, no sir. I'm on that same program. Good argument, Mr. Rogers. I, I didn't. I didn't catch it. It squirted out, and it was already out. And I didn't object because it was already out, and I, I waited to object on your say until another statement. All right. But I, I'm not trying to draw attention to it. I just would just like for the state not to be alarmed. Yeah. You know, if Larry North was going to say it's about 400, we should have asked him when he was here in the stand, <coughs> and then, then we could have used uh, AR 26. So, yeah, don't argue that. You know. right, anything else, Mr. Jones? No, you're on. Uh, I have something. Okay. Your Honor, um, I was appointed on Mr. Kipling's case on 622. I filed my discovery motion on 626. It came to my attention last night that uh, there was a email or some additional supplemental testimony by Devontae Patrick that we have never received. And I don't want to be ambushed at trial about it. I have the original interview with Mr. Patrick who says he didn't know who anyone was and then I think there was another statement like a year and a half later where he said um, he didn't fight Mr. Colbert. And you don't have that? I've so. never had that. And I just found out about it last evening. Well obviously you're going to have to provide a prior 
uh, the cross examination. So, so if you haven't already done that, you can make sure Ms. Lee has the. Yeah, there's not a recorded statement. It was attached to a discovery response that I filed in no. piece of paper. I think that was, it was filed. Wasn't a recorded statement. I think no. that was filed 619 before I was appointed, okay. and I never got it. Okay. I'm not sure you're entitled to it, but General, if you give it to the other lawyer, sure. make sure you did it. All right, anything else, Ms. Lee? No, John. All right, folks, we're going to take a 10-minute recess. Uh, I'm going to adjourn court for the evening, but I would like to see the attorneys uh, in chambers in about 10 minutes. See y'all tomorrow at 9. Uh, you got another deal.